And we find ourselves here at the Synology stand here at Computex 2025 here in Taipei. And a number of us are waiting for it. Let's be honest, we were looking at our watches. Finally, an NVMe flash solution for Synology's lineup. And quite a few to talk about today. Now, this here at the top is the first entry into the PAS series. There's actually several ones that we're going to talk about right now. But we're going to start with the biggest gun of all, if you come in real quick. What we have here is a dual controller U.3 flash system. Alongside this, rocking out with a smaller factor version down here and the PAS 3600 down here, it's a cost-effective SATA alternative rather than NVMe. Now, on top of that, we've got the expansion devices that are going to be connected with HD SAS. So again, that's 12 gig for each one of those expanded nodes onto the original storage, and all of them take advantage of U.3. Now, one of the earliest questions I had about the U.3 PAS series, by the way, that's parallel access store, uh, parallel active storage. I will say, one of my earliest questions was to do with the storage media. I think a lot of us would agree there are give and take and questions we're throwing around about Synology's approach to storage media. And given their portfolio really only has SATA storage media and 1M.2 based on durability, I had my question. So they were able to supply me with this. This is their U.3 drive. Now I'm going to be looking into that more later on. It goes up to, we've got an 8TB model here but this is the drive media they are going to be utilizing in this system. Obviously, once again, as we've discussed many, many times, this is Synology uh, approaching verified media on their platform. And I think there is an argument for some users that once you reach this level of storage, dedicated verified media is kind of a must, or if, if not a must, then an accepted norm in that space. But at least we can now see that Synology are engaging with flash media now. Now the PAS7700, this can feature up to four 100 gig slots and 12 2.5 gig ports there. Now the more uh, cost effective model running on SATA, again, runs up to four 25 gig ports and eight 10 G ports. I'm not aware of the base level connections these arrive with, but at the very least we have the option of those expandable units. One of which taking advantage of SATA drives and the other one taking advantage of U.3 drives. Next up, something we talked about about a year and a half ago, when Synology was first talking about their DVA series, the Deep Video Analysis, AI-powered recognition and database entry kind of pull system for surveillance, we always wondered would they ever approach a rank mount model? And I'm pleased to say, it is here, the DVA 7400. Supporting up to 100 cameras and 40 video analytic tasks at any time. This also has two 10 gig ports, something of a must, I think, once you reach that level of um, video feed coming in and out. And the dedicated AI GPU inside uh, via a graphics card there is supplied to a larger amount of storage than what we've seen previously over the other DVA systems, which have always been more tightly knit to the desktop. I'm still waiting for confirmation on uh, uh, AI camera licenses or just camera license in general, but obviously if you use Synology's own cameras, you don't have to worry too much about those licenses. And from the very big onto the very small. Remember we were talking a few months ago about a new slim model? Well, technically it's not going to happen. They've renamed it the FS200T, but it's largely what we already knew. Now this is taking advantage of that J41 quad core processor. It also has, I believe, four gig of memory, supporting up to six 2.5 inch drives. This has now been reclassified as a flash station product. So focusing largely on the connections there running through the back onto six SATA storage drives. Now, one of the things I find kind of weird is the fact that we've got a 2.5 gig connection and a one gig connection. Now, I'm sure all of us can agree that it's still gonna serve as a phenomenal bottleneck on this. Now, why there isn't a 10 GB connection on there, I'm not entirely certain, I think, at this profile. Yes, there is a heat question there, but nonetheless, for those that were still waiting on a flash model that wonder why things have gone a bit quiet, that's largely it. It's been reprofiled the FS200 t Scaling things up ever so slightly, here's three devices that we already talked about a few months ago, but now we've got more concrete to go on here. Number one, we've got that expandable two bay. This is a DS725 Plus, and again, taking advantage of that quad core AMD processor there. It's also got four gig of ECC memory, and on the rear, we got a couple of Ethernet ports, but we are now lacking that 10 GPE upgrade, which 
let's face it, we aren't happy about that. Moreover, we've got ourselves a 2.5 gig port, but a 1 gig Ethernet port. Once again, Synology give us, Synology take us away. We're still taking advantage of the USB-C expansion, but still nonetheless, right now, when it compares to the DS723+, Plus, keep in mind that this newer generation device has had that scalability removed there. Now, moving away from those, we can talk a little bit more about the home multimedia stuff. So we've got that 4-bay and we've got that 2-bay there. Now, these are going to serve as moderately small upgrades over the DS423 Plus and the DS224 Plus that came before them. So first and foremost, we've got ourselves that DS425 Plus there. And as you can see, it's largely the same. Much like that slim model that we just talked about, this is arriving with a 1 gig and a 2.5 gig network port there on the rear. It also features the same CPU as its predecessor, that J4125. No expandability there, no utilization of the PCIe, but we kind of saw that coming. And the same can be said for that 2-bay model as well. The 2-bay model there, the DS225 Plus, this device here, again, J4125 processor, DDR4 memory, and of course, they're on the rear, 2.5 gig, which is good, but still paired with a 1 GBE port near there. There is the counter argument that this has only got two SATA bays there inside, but still, even if you were utilizing SATA SSDs, and I know a lot of users utilizing this would use SATA SSDs, but still nonetheless, it's a moderate upgrade, it's a refresh. We talked about this before. Circling back once again to the controversial subject of storage media, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about SSDs here. They've got their new U.3 SSD I mentioned earlier on, but I was unable to find out exactly more about this drive. What exactly is the controller that's being utilized? Are they originally coaxa perhaps? Uh, unfortunately, no one on the stand was able to confirm to me uh, who the original manufacturer is. No doubt it's got their own firmware on board, but more interestingly, there was a new M.2 NVMe. I've been asking for a while for a high performance SSD, and from what I can see here, this one utilized an integrate IG5636 FAA, I'm calling cool available at parties, is indeed a Gen 4 controller. But unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of information readily available about this drive on the stand. So hopefully, I'll update you with more on this soon, because hopefully, it might actually give us more than those SMV 3400s. Another fresh entry into the B Station series, something we talked about a few weeks ago, launching, well, today, um, is the B Station Plus. This is a one bay, pre populated 8 TB simplified NAS solution. Much like the original B Station, which ran on an ARM based processor, this has double the memory but also it has that Intel CPU. It's not the newest, the J4125 processor, but it is still an integrated graphics processor. Now, why do a lot of people want integrate graphics? Well, for Plex. And this system not only when you deploy it, having the BSM software, B Station Manager software deployed within 10 minutes, but on top of that, it has um, B Photos, which you can then integrate with your backup uh, of your files on your mobile devices. But on top of that, you've also got Plex Media Server pre-installed and pre-bundled with that original installation. Indeed, it also arrives with all of the individual directories for Plex Media Server already set up in advance. And all you have to do is cl claim the Plex token after initialization. That is gonna greatly simplify Plex um, setup for a lot of users who just don't wanna muck around and don't really know about the installation and setup of Plex, uh, enabling hardware transcoding there with your Plex Pass account. Now, alongside that, it also has bundled in B Protect. Now, B Protect, you get three months for free. It is a backup cloud-based operation, but again, after those three months, it is subscription-based. Now, there is give and take on that, of course. This is a one-bay solution. You can't integrate another third-party drive. It's only the drive that's inside. It's a Synology Plus series drive, but it does have USB-A and USB-C for enabling those dedicated backups. And you can set up backup operations with MB files to back up towards the cloud, back up towards the USB drive. So you still have that there. Instead of the RAID safety net, which I know a lot of us are disappointed about, I will say there's absolutely no way they're not gonna release a two-bay version of this. You can see where this is going. You can see how a lot of those desktop units there are moving towards SMB, moving towards more business deployment, and they're pushing a lot more of that multimedia towards this. So. This is probably what's going to be coming up from the ground level of that portfolio, swallowing up the value, swallowing up the uh, standard class devices there. So at least for now, we're looking at a one-bay model, but what this represents as an easy Plex server setup, 
Uh, your TV is not to be sniffed at, using a lot of 4K media as well, that's still a lot of storage. I have question marks about deploying from a hard drive rather than an SSD for multi-IO um, uh, happening at any, any given time, but still nonetheless, this is still to date. One, the easiest Plex Media server setup I could ever recommend, and two, it's probably the most powerful one bay uh, I've ever seen as well. Something to keep in mind there, but moving on. And just a quick one, we already talked about these about two weeks ago. This is the new five bay and the new eight bay. Both taking advantage of that quad core eight thread AMD embedded Ryzen processor, both arriving with eight gig of ECC memory. Now these have got that one gig ethernet scaled up to 2.5 GBE. But that's really the only changes that have been applied. We talked about in the case of the DS1525 that this system not only supports that new USB-C expandability, but it has maintained that mini PCIe upgrade there. There isn't any other adapters currently available. I've looked around the stand, I didn't see any alternatives, but still nonetheless, you've still got that option there to scale up 10 GBE. Now, that's something that has always existed on the 8-bay model. The 8-bay has always had traditional PCIe upgrades there, and of course, Synology has been scaling out a lot of those PCIe upgrades over the years, now featuring, I believe, 25 gig and 50 gig ones. So again, I know there are gonna be users not in love with the idea of four ports going down to two, but 2.5 GBE for some users is gonna be a suitable upgrade there. But there is, of course, that lingering question mark about drive verification. So that's really the majority of the hardware that we're seeing here at Computex 2025 from Synology at their stand right now. Now, again, there's still those lingering questions about storage uh, verification happening right now in the back end of Synology working with those third-party vendors. Now, I've spoken to Synology a few times here and they are gonna have hopefully a one-to-one -one with me later this week. We'll really get down into the questions about that verification. At least right now, they've gone full scale with a lot of the 2025 series of devices. Again, some of them more powerful than others and certainly things like the PAS system over there are ones that have been on for demand for a long time. Then of course you've got the innovations within the SSD and the kind of fully populating of the multimedia range that they've got right now. Again, it's not going to be for everyone. Some of the moves that they've gone for are not the most popular, but at the very least it's consistent right now. It's really up to seeing what the rest of the NAS players in the market right now do in response to this. Now, we're going to be covering a lot of that here during Coffee Tech 2025, but at least right now, I'm going to say goodbye here to the technology stand, but of course coming back later this week to hopefully talk more about their new start on drive verification and hopefully elaborate more on just exactly where they're going with this. We're working those third party partners. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, well, check out the article below where we're going to a lot more detail about a lot of things we saw here. And apart from that, I'll see you next time.